Hello and welcome back to yet another GCSE revision lesson. Now, within this lesson, I'm going to be going over question number two in English language paper two, okay? This question, to be honest, I want to show you, hopefully at the end of this video, that's actually really straightforward. And most importantly, it's actually quite easy to gain seven, if not eight marks in this question, as long as you know what you're looking for. And most importantly, you're integrating your discussion for both extracts. Remember, question number one, once you've answered that question, which is asking you to look at source A, where you're selecting four statements that are true, you're shading in in the multiple choice. Question number two then throws you into the deep end. It says, okay, great, you've talked about source A, that's out of the way. Now it's time to look at both sources and summarize, are they similar or different in whatever aspect the keywords ask you, okay? However, that shouldn't throw you off because number one, you don't need to talk about technique. Great. Number two, all you simply need to do is pick out one bit of evidence, compare it in source A, and then compare it with another bit of evidence in source B. Talk about how they're similar or different, and if you're fast enough, maybe you can do this twice. Now, let me show you guys the approach I would suggest step by step, so there's simply just four steps you need to bear in mind when answering this question. And then I'll show you a model response and how I applied this method when answering a past paper two question for question number two, okay? Remember, firstly, this question is worth eight marks, so do not spend too long on this question. Spend a max of 10 minutes on this question, and it tests your AO1. It tests your ability to firstly select the right bits of information, okay? So just literally pick out the two bits of evidence from source A and source B. And also you need to be able to, what they call, synthesize your evidence. That's just a fancy way of saying, okay, great. Um, I need to answer this question and show, if, is it similar or is it different? Am I able to take a good bit of evidence from source A, good bit of evidence from source B, talk about how they're either similar or different, okay? Don't let that whole idea of like, oh, I've got to synthesize, confuse you, okay? It's really, really straightforward. That's step number one when answering question number two. Now, the next step is remember to highlight the keywords in the question so you are answering it correctly. The summary question either asks you to only look for similarities or differences between the two sources. Remember, when you're reading both sources in paper two, there's gonna be a theme that emerges. It could be either a theme of camping, it could be a theme of sweets, whatever, right? And then question number two asks you, okay, great, you know what this theme is? So think about, when you think about what the writers are saying, can you find a similarity between keywords in the question or a difference? Select that, and then you're now looking for the bits of evidence that either show how they're similar or different. That's step number two. Then step number three when answering the summary question. Try to go for a really obvious similarity or difference. I know this sounds kind of obvious, but it isn't for some students. Sometimes some students say, hang on, I was reading the extracts, both of them, and both of them, you know, in terms of similarity, they both were talking about sweets. That's an obvious similarity if you're asked to look for similarities, okay? A difference could be, okay, I was reading both extracts. One of them was talking about Jaffa sweets, another one was talking about Fantail sweets. That's a difference, okay? Go for something that's super obvious. Don't overcomplicate it. Don't say, oh no, no, that's too easy, an obvious difference or an obvious similarity. Make your life easy. Go for that similar or difference point that's really, really obvious, okay? So take the text that's face value, that's step number three. And finally, step number four, this is how you now bring it all together. Mistakes student make for question two in the language paper two exam is they're like, okay, great, I've got my two bits of evidence from source A and source B. Paragraph one, I'm gonna talk about source A, and then paragraph two, I'm gonna talk about source B. You need to compare, you need to talk about them comparatively, so you're integrating this in one paragraph, or if you've got time, you can do it in two paragraphs. How do you do it? What's the easiest way to do it? My preferred paragraph structure is the peel paragraph, okay? Point, evidence, explanation, link. This is how I would suggest you integrate both source A and source B. Start off with the point. Talk about source A and source B, refer back to the keywords. Whilst source A shows sweets in this way, source B also shows sweets in this way, whatever the keyword is asking, is it similarity or is it a difference? You reinforce that in your opening point and you're talking about both source A and source B. That's your opening point. Then you find the bits of evidence, okay? So then again, you embed your quotations. Source A shows me this about sweets, source B shows me this about sweets, okay? You are embedding. You're constantly talking about both sources throughout your paragraph. Then. Second E in your pill paragraph, you are explaining. Here, great thing about this uh, question, you don't need to talk about any techniques, language or structure, okay? You're simply summarizing. Are they similar or different? So you say, whilst in source A, we can see this. 
in source B we can see that if it's different or in source A we can see this similarly in source B we can see that that's literally it for the explanation and then of course when you're finishing off your paragraph you're linking it back to the question and the keywords to show the examiner that you know what you're talking about so in your link you simply link it back to the question that therefore means in source A this is happening what's in source B this is happening super straightforward to get some really really good marks in the summary question so now what I'm going to do is show you guys how I'm going to apply this uh, uh, to a past paper model response question. So let's apply the approach that I've suggested for the summary question to this particular paper. Remember that this paper and the example I'm going to be giving you guys is taken from the June 2020 exam. This exam is available to download for free on AQA's website. Therefore, of course, you can go ahead and download it and read the extracts. And of course, if you want to practice after watching this video, go ahead and do so. I would really encourage you to do so. Now, guys, I'm going to be going over a worked response that I've already created, but I'll show you piece by piece and step by step how you can integrate your analysis and, of course, write a summary summary either of similarities or differences that come up in both sources remember that question number two is the first comparative question you always of course as you know by this stage source a you get one source which is modern so this is source a written in 1988 by the author joe simpson and it's called touching the void it's an autobiographical account and source b which is a victorian text called climbing the major in this case it was written by a lady called Gertrude Bell in 1899. Now, I'm not going to read through the insert because you can do that in your own time when you download this paper, but just a quick summary. Source A essentially describes Joe Simpson's really, really painful, his excruciating descent down the mountain, okay? So he's descending down the mountain, he's broken his leg and he's with uh, somebody else who's helping him descend, okay? So he's with his fellow climber called Simon Yates. Simon is basically kind of carrying him as he descends, but Simon isn't that great in carrying him gently, okay? So Simon is kind of um, helping him down the mountain, but he still kind of makes mistakes. Uh, Joe's leg snags on the side and so on. So Joe really describes this horrible, horrible experience of trying to descend the mountain. And of course, the end is quite climactic in the sense that we're kind of left on a cliffhanger, okay? We're not entirely sure whether they've actually managed to get down safely. That's source A. However, source B, which is similar in terms of the ideas that they explore, okay? So you've got Gertrude Bell, unlike Simpson and Simon, okay? So in source A, they're both experienced climbers. Gertrude Bell actually isn't an experienced climber. She's a Victorian climber, but she's simply an explorer. And so she needs the help of an accompanying person called Marius, okay, so she hires this local guide who accompanies her, and he helps her climb the Meiji in the Alps, okay, so of course, the similar theme in both texts is to do with climbing, but whilst Joe has a broken leg, he's really suffering, and we're not entirely sure whether they, he manages to get down safely with uh, Simon, in Source B, we find that Gertrude, when they set off quite in the darkness, okay, and of course, we're even given an image here of the Alps to help us, when she sets off, you know, um, it's really beautiful. It's this perfect night that she describes. And Marius is a great guide, okay? So he really looks after her. He's quite gentle, unlike Sim uh, Simon, okay? So he is quite gentle, helping her climb up the mountain. And also he helps her descend. And by the end, and this is a letter that she's written to uh, her friend or relatives at home, she basically says, um, you know, we had this amazing climb. It was really difficult, but actually Marius really helped me. And then I got back to my hotel and, you know, I had these nice cups of tea and I got back safely. So unlike, of course, the ending of Source A, where there's still this sense of suspense. We're not sure whether they get to the bottom. In Source B, there's this really, really optimistic ending. She's really proud of herself for climbing and scaling the Alps or the Meiji, but with the help of Marius. And as I mentioned, I'm not gonna read through this. I want to keep this lesson fairly brief, but I just want to show you more technique and approach when it comes to answering question number two. If you want to read this, you can read this in your own time. Just literally download this paper, from AQA's website, the June 2020 paper. So let's have a look at the summary question. Now, as you can see, I've highlighted several keywords because that's gonna guide my focus. And as I mentioned, when answering this eight marker, try to aim to write at least one comparative peel paragraph, peel meaning point, evidence, explanation, link, but you are talking about both sources. Now, if you can only manage in 10 minutes to do just one paragraph, do the one paragraph and move on. However, what you're going to see in my example is I've written two paragraphs, of course, in the 10 minutes, that therefore means I need to write two comparisons with um, five minutes per paragraph. OK, so let me show you how you can integrate your analysis in your first 
summary paragraph and how you can talk about both sources and your point, both sources and your evidence, both sources and your explanation and both sources in your link. Now remember for this question, you're asked, uh, you're told firstly that both writers are accompanied by another person on their adventure, Simon and Source A and Marius and Source B, okay? So you're being asked in this question to look not actually at the writers, but the people that are with them in the extracts. And then you're told to use details from both sources to write a summary of what you understand about the differences. So you're being asked to focus in on the differences between the two companions, Simon and Marius. Now, of course, what I did is I selected the first difference. So I took one bit of evidence from source A, a bit of evidence from source B, and then I did that again. So then I took another bit of evidence from source A and source B to emphasize these differences, okay? So here's my first pill paragraph. This is how you compare and write a perfect summary paragraph for question number two. So I'll start off with my point. Firstly, it's evident that Simon sees Joe as his equal and he's just as qualified as him. Yet Marius is subservient to Gertrude and he's far more experienced in climbing. Subservient means he's a servant, he's helping, he's lower ranking than her because of course it's Gertrude that hires Marius whilst Simon and Joe, they are equals, okay? They're just climbing the mountain together and it just so happens that Joe breaks his leg. This is my opening point where I'm basically talking about how whilst Simon is, the, uh, is just as qualified as Joe as a climber, Marius actually is far more qualified than Gertrude, but he is subservient to her because he's not her friend. He actually is working for her. That's my opening point. And as you can see, I've integrated both source A and source B. Now here's my evidence. And of course, I'm making it clear that I'm talking about clear differences between the two companions, Simon and Marius. So here's my evidence. While Simon is in a partnership, Marius is hired. I've taken just two bits of one word uh, quotes from source A and source B and embedded them. Here's my explanation. It is evident that Simon seems to view his fellow climber as a partner and he treats him more casually than Marius. So I'm saying here's what Simon believes in source A versus Marius uh, in source B. Nevertheless, Marius evidently does not see Gertrude as experienced enough so he helps her, yet he is aware of her power as his employer. That's my explanation. I'm constantly integrating my discussion of both source A and source B consistently. I'll start off with my point talking about source A and source B. I've added two bits of evidence, one from source A and one from source B. Now I've then zoomed in on how this is illustrating differences between the two companions in source A and source B. Now I'll finish off by linking in my peel paragraph. Thus, whilst Simon is just as qualified as Joe and he views him as his equal, Marius is more experienced than Gertrude and he is subservient to her. That's my opening point, okay, or rather my opening paragraph. Again, if you only have enough time to do this in 10 minutes, have one chunky comparison paragraph, then move on to question number three, okay? Because this is worth just eight marks, so you don't want to spend too long on this question and then steal that time away from the big marker questions. However, if you've got time, you can do a second peel paragraph if you're rapid enough in writing this in, say, around five minutes. So here's the second peel paragraph. So this is my opening point. Talking about additional differences. In addition, it's clear that Simon seems far more playful than Marius. Indeed, Marius seems serious and cautious. That's my second point. Here's my evidence from both sources. Simon speaks cheerfully, yet Marius is perfectly fearful. Again, I've used evidence cheerfully from source A and perfectly fearful from source B. Now here's my explanation for both sources. There's a vast difference in the attitudes they adopt towards mountain climbing. Simon takes a jovial approach, jovial means happy, to climbing and descending the mountain. However, Marius seems far more somber, which means serious, and measured on the mountain. That's my explanation, talking about why they are different. As you can see, I don't mention any language and technique in either of my paragraph because this is simply a summary question, okay? In your explanation, you don't need to add any techniques. You just simply say, Here's the difference between both of them. Now here's my link. Consequently, while Simon seems to be a playful companion, Marius is a serious mountaineer. So here again, I've highlighted why they are different. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna read through both comparison paragraphs one last time, just in case you missed anything, but pay attention to the fact that I'm literally using the peel paragraph structure and at each stage in my peel paragraph, I talk about both sources consistently. Your comparison must always be integrated into the same paragraph. So here's my first paragraph one last time. 
Firstly, it's evident that Simon sees Joe as an equal and he is just as qualified as him, yet Marius is subservient to Gertrude and he's far more experienced in climbing. While Simon is in a partnership, Marius is hired. It's evident that Simon seems to view his fellow climber as a partner and he treats him more casually than Marius. Nevertheless, Marius evidently does not see Gertrude as experienced enough so he helps her, yet he is aware of her power as his employer. Thus, while Simon is just as qualified as Joe and he views him as his equal, Marius is more experienced than Gertrude and he is subservient to her. In addition, it's clear that Simon seems far more playful than Marius. Indeed, Marius seems serious and cautious. Simon speaks cheerfully, yet Marius is perfectly fearful. There's a vast difference in the attitudes they adopt towards mountain climbing. Simon takes a jovial approach to climbing and descending the mountain. However, Marius seems far more somber and measured on the mountain. Consequently, while Simon seems to be a playful companion, Marius is a serious mountaineer. And that's really how to approach the summary question for question number two.